uh, make him feel welcome. Thank Hi. you. Wow, thanks. Ooh, I got that voice. Echo. That, I can get away with, I needed that in the classroom. Um, so what an opportunity to be here with you guys today at Gamification Summit. Um, this conference has been fantastic. Um, all the things that I'm learning and, and one of the things that I tweeted out and, and some of my educator colleagues have said is like, you just take that word business or take that word corporate or take that word and, and swap out classroom or school and take that word uh, employee or customer and swap out the word student or teacher. And, and so many of the things that I'm picking up here, I can transfer right into the classroom because really gamification applies wherever um, and fun is fun, right? So. Um, I am an instructional technology coordinator for a school district in southeastern North Carolina, Pender County Schools. Um, I've been doing this for about 15 years now. And um, I started out as a high school science teacher for around seven years, um, moved into the instructional technology arena uh, thereafter and have been there ever since and, and have loved the entire journey from day one. All of my resources, my slides, and, and everything about this project and all the other crazy game-based learning projects that I've been involved in um, are on my website, um, edurealms.com. I'm an infrequent blogger there. It's like, oh, you know what? I haven't blogged in a couple months. I better put something up. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of a digital hoarder. So every time I create something or, or find something cool, I try to link it out there. So if you want to know more about games in the K-12 environment, feel free to go there and steal liberally. Um, I do need to do a couple of shout outs to other folks who have been instrumental in this project. Um, one of the classroom teachers that I've been working with, Craig Lawson, a fantastic language arts teacher. He's now a literacy coach in our district. Um, also a World of Warcraft player and a gamer. We actually met through gaming and he moved to North Carolina and is actually working in our school district now. So really cool story there. Um, and Ms. Peggy Sheehy, who's here in the audience with us today, one of the early adopters of the program, uh, working with students in uh, Suffern, New York. So anyway, let's, let's face some, a, true, a, a stark reality. School sucks. And if you don't believe me, you need to go out into a school and look. All right, now I'm not saying this is always true. There are amazing teachers out there doing amazing things in their classrooms, incredible things. And there's a lot of talk about education reform but true education reform, I believe, is happening at the classroom level. It's not going to be some big corporate top-down sort of thing. It's where individual teachers working with real students are doing real things. This is just one example. So you see this kid in the back? This kid, he's not, I don't know who he is really, but I'm using this as an example from my own experiences. Um, this kid's bored out of his mind, but this kid here by evening, why is he so tired? Because in the evening, he's a level 90 human paladin leading massive groups of 25 or 40 people on these, from all over the world on these crazy, um, complex missions, coordinating things and working out, negotiating um, roles in the group and all that, and, and is experiencing an incredible level of learning and ownership of that experience. Um, but when he's in the classroom, I give him a standard shoot for the middle kind of curriculum that's very mapped out. He has no input into it. And so, of course, he's bored out of his mind. And so that was sort of the, the thing that got this started. School should be that engaging. And so I had a time when I was teaching high school that, that I had students who were playing these games. They actually got me into it. They sucked me into it years ago in EverQuest. And from that day forward, I was in this just amazing like brain buzz, like, oh my gosh, look at all this crazy cool stuff that's going on. And, and it gave me that third space to have an experience with my students outside of school that allowed me to build rapport and build really cool relationships with them. And it was, you know, as we're running across these, these open plains of Karana and EverQuest, I could say, hey, did you study for your physical science test last night? Oh no, sorry. Okay, well let's review, I'll follow you and I'll send you questions while we run to that dungeon. And so it just became this really interesting thing where I had an opportunity to build rapport with my students. And, and so I never would have thought that I would one day be standing in San Francisco presenting about how I'm actually using games like that with students in the classroom. But here we are. So fast forward into my role as an instructional tech coordinator. I worked in a, worked in a district with amazing leader, uh, leadership that gives me a lot of professional trust. And I pitch it to them one day and I said, hey, 
I've got a little funding. Um, I've got this crazy idea. I want to work with at-risk students, students who have issues with attendance or maybe their, their grades aren't that great or whatever. And, and I want to take them into this game called World of Warcraft. And we're going to spend time there. While we're there, we're going to work on reading and writing and leadership and digital citizenship and all those sorts of things. And my district leadership, my assistant superintendent looked at me kind of like, what? <laughs> what are you talking? She said, I don't understand all the gaming stuff, but I understand what you want to do for kids. Let's see what happens. And so that's where we began as an after school club. Um, and we designed that based around um, that idea of working with at-risk students. But from there, um, the principal of the school that we were working in kept coming into the media center and saying, oh my gosh, how did you get so-and-so to do this thing that they're doing? Why is his attendance improving? Why is this kid suddenly turning in assignments in his regular language arts class? And so as she began to observe the things that were going on in that space, she came to uh, Craig and myself at the end of the year and said, what do we need to do to take this to the next level? And we said, we need to take it into the regular school day. So Craig and I spent about a year developing a course, a language arts enrichment course, not their regular language arts course, but an elective that supplemented it based on World of Warcraft. And then we just said, hey, anybody else crazy enough to try this, let's give it away for free. So we put it out on our website. And the idea was that a teacher could come along and try to replicate what we're doing if, if they could get it approved in their district and use whatever parts of this they wanted. They could build their own, um, et cetera. You know, just modify it however they needed to. We originally built it in Moodle, which is a learning management system. Uh, but Moodle, for all its good qualities, is very linear and very traditional in its approach to um, the metrics and the grading and all that. So um, a year or so later, I came across a product from um, out of Boise State University called 3D Game Lab, which allowed us to do one of the things that we were trying to do with our curriculum, which was to gamify it. Because grades suck. Grades are stupid. You go into a classroom as a student, you start out with 100%, right? And the whole semester, the whole course, is an effort to stem a slow bleed uh, in your grading. And, and if, if World of Warcraft were designed that way, who wants to play that game, right? That stinks. If I was a level 60, or I guess level 89 um, paladin, and I go and I get killed by a dragon, and the game sent me back to level 1 and said, start again, I would quit. And I wouldn't pay $15 to keep playing. So we said, you know, maybe the classroom should, should take a note from that. So again, because it's what everybody's talking about now, we felt it was important to build buy-in. You may or may not have heard of the National Common Core Standards, but these are the thing now that states are adopting as standardized curricula. So we said, well, let's align what we're doing to that. So we aligned it to the curricula, and we used this as sort of a model. So we said, we're going to take this idea of the hero's journey, that people start out and they have this story, and, and you're a hero in a world, starting at level one and finding your place in that world and your role in that world, and you begin this journey. So students have this perspective or this experience as a, as a hero, as an avatar in that space. And we said, you know, we want them to experience literature and good fantasy literature, so let's have them read The Hobbit. And while they're having their own experiences, <clears throat> they can look and, and observe Bilbo's experiences as he begins his journey in that story and they could draw parallels, and that's all kinds of fodder for creative writing. And then the one thing that middle schoolers are never at a loss to talk about is themselves, so let's have them do reflective writing, and let's compare your experiences in that space and how you feel as a hero in World of Warcraft to your experiences as a, um, as a teenager living in southeastern North Carolina. What's that like? Where's the overlap? Where's it different? So again, we set out to gamify the classroom, we said we're getting rid of all the things that smell like school. Um, we told our students that they are, while they're there, they're not students, they're heroes, and we expect them to behave as such. We're not teachers in that space. We're their lore keepers. We're guides. We're not that person that, at the front that says, you need to know this, you need to know this, you need to know this. We simply go along and we play the game with them, guiding that experience along the way, giving them feedback based off of their experiences and, and the kinds of things that they're doing when they're writing and all the other products that they're doing. And we just give them feedback on it to help them improve their writing, improving their grammar. Um, so that's part of it. 
And instead of grades, because let's face it, grading, again, sucks. Failure in school is a punitive thing. I mean, how many of you had like got zeros for not for, for using a bathroom pass or for doing something that had nothing to do with whether you were actually learning or not? We use, unfortunately, a lot of schools and a lot of teachers have used grades as a punitive action to punish people. And, and so we stigmatize failure such that I don't want to fail. And we talk, one of the things that I told students this year when we started the thing, I said, you're going to fail in here. And they freaked out a little bit. I said, no, it's okay. I want you to fail. And I want you to fail a lot. And I want you to reflect on that failure. And we're going to fail some more after that and see what happens. Failure is the name of the game because that's where the real learning is happening is through the failure. And so instead of grades, let's get rid of grades because that's dumb anyway. Let's go with experience points and levels. So 3D Game Lab really allowed us to do that. Before when we were using Moodle, we were using Google Spreadsheets and that was a nightmare. Um, 3D Game Lab really made that simple for us. And so we really started having this concept of, yeah, I can actually win this class. What is it like to win a class? Um, instead of assignments, we don't give assignments. We give our students quests. I want you to go in and interact with an NPC or a computer-controlled character in the world of Warcraft. And based off of that experience, I want you to come back and do some writing. Reflect on that. Talk to me about it. So we give them those quests, and they earn experience points for completing them. They get to choose, which is another amazing thing. Um, so as they are working through our quest tre uh, tree, if you will, they get points where they get, they get to a point in that they get to choose. Do I want to follow a quest series on um, poetry, or do I want to do argumentative writing? They can choose, and once they complete one, they've earned that badge or that mastery for, for completing that. They move and choose something different. So learner choice is a big part of what we're doing here. Um, all their stats and achievements are there, so they get instant feedback. We get instant feedback. Parent calls, wants to know, hey, how's my kid doing? Oh, your kid's to level 34. Well, that doesn't really mean much to the parents, so we do have to do some translation for them. But the kids have the exact connection. They can see where they are in their progression through the course material. So let me show you some of the things, the crazy things that we're doing. And I want to show you some actual samples of student work. One of the things that we did was to have students take on the role of characters in World of Warcraft. And this was during, this specifically, this activity was during the events leading up to catac the Cataclysm expansion. Because there were all these events going on in the world. And so we wanted students to explore characterization. We said, you're going to take on the role of some computer controlled character, whether it's the human king, um, the king of the dwarves, or even that, that lady that just wanders back and forth between Stormwind and Goldshire that sells bread. What's the, what are the events like from her perspective? And then we're going to create tweets and we're going to interact with each other through Twitter to see what happens. And it was awesome. And the way that the kids began to understand the point of view and characterization and those sorts of things was fascinating. We also talked about propaganda and ads. And so we had students design their own ads about some of the events that were going on. <laughs> and this was one of my favorites. A student created this as a poster for a chewing gum. And, and one of the things he, cre he added was safeguard chewing gum. And he put this tagline in there. We didn't prompt him for this, but this was awesome. It says it will also strengthen your enamel for a fortnight. <laughs> what middle schooler knows what a fortnight is? And so we looked at him and was like, what's a fortnight? He's like, well, I looked it up. You know, and I was like, oh, that's amazing. And these are the kinds of things. They're acquiring vocabulary that typical students aren't acquiring in their classroom. Here's another example where to protect the night elves' ears, they developed um, ear muffs from the rats in the deep run tram. <sighs> um, of course, you have to have a little potty humor in middle school, so uh, gas masks for cataclysmic fumes was very important. Um, we also had students do things like, okay, so you're reading The Hobbit. Pick a character from The Hobbit. If that was a character in World of Warcraft, what race and what class would it be? Support your, your, your uh, assertion by citing your, your works. And so we taught them citations via that. We also talked a little bit about business style writing. So we said, we want you to write a mission statement for your player guild, because all of our students play in a player guild. They interact with each other. And all of this writing, by the way, is taking place online in a guild website. So it's a threaded forum kind of discussion. Um, and this was one of the things that one of our students wrote. This student, by the way, was a, uh, English was his second language. And this was some of the most beautiful writing. I mean, granted, we had to help him you know, 
work on a little grammar and a little spelling here or there, but a great piece of writing that really exemplified what he was learning in that space and what it meant to have a mission statement. Um, our kids have led tours for educators from across the world, um, and so that's been um, a really good experience for them. So they actually have to go in and really explain to other educators what it is they're learning, what it is they're experiencing in that space. Um, and we see really neat things and behaviors out of kids while that's going on. And uh, this is one of Peggy's students that did this writing. And this is a great story. Um, but a student who was writing his backstory for his character. And so it's a creative writing piece. And Peggy took this to his lang regular language arts teacher and said, I want you to look at what this student wrote. And that teacher said, he didn't write this. And, and Peggy said, yeah, yes, he did. I watched him write it. She, she said, why doesn't he write like this for me? And it's that engagement piece, again, that makes all the difference. So as we kind of come to uh, wrap up here, this is where we are. We're four years into this program. The, the curriculum that we've put out there has been picked up by other schools, but we still face some challenges. Um, schools right now, so you know, and by the way, I really suggest you get out into public schools to, so you can see what's going on, but schools are struggling to break free from a very industrial age model of education. A lot of kids still sitting in rows, still doing standard, periodic standardized testing at the end of instruction, and, and that periodic standardized testing is very high stakes. And so it puts a lot of pressure on the teacher because teachers' evaluations are linked to students. And that student, you don't know what kind of home life they've come from. They may be coming out of a house where that morning their, their drunk father beat them, yet you're held accountable for how they perform on a standardized test. So there's a lot of pressure, and there's a lot of things that schools and teachers are dealing with right now. And so you need to understand that. It's very challenging to go into a school and say, I've got this really innovative program that we need to try out. It's different because one of the things they're going to want to see is how's this going to improve test scores, test scores, test scores, test scores. And so you just be aware that that is part of the climate that we're in right now. Um, the other issue, obviously, is funding. Um, we struggle to find funding. But as you've seen um, with Amy from uh, Florida this morning, um, we can do, teachers can do some amazing things with a small amount of funding because uh, a lot of teachers out there are very imaginative, very creative, and we're used to doing that. But still, we need that funding to be able to continue to do projects like this. But let me leave you with some opportunities that we have. Um, the cool thing about this is I'm here, and this conversation has begun, and that's what's exciting to me, is that as businesses and corporations come to our schools and say, we need people who are critical thinkers, people who are problem solvers, people who can communicate and exhibit leadership. And I can say, let me show you some of the things that our heroes are doing right now and how what they're doing connects to what you need, more so than any SAT score, ACT score, any of those kinds of things as an indicator of how successful they'll be. That conversation has begun, and that's really exciting to me. And, and you can help me by spreading the word, just making that, and getting out there and sharing that awareness. This project is growing because people are starting to look at it. So we've, we're in 11 schools now. We've actually embraced a new game called Guild Wars 2 because there's no subscription fee. So once we buy it, we own it, we can keep going. And ultimately, lastly, I'll leave you with this. It's our heroes, the students, they're going to lead the way because it's ultimately they have to own this, and they are owning it. And I encourage you to take a look at what they're doing. So again, thank you. Uh, I'll be around to answer questions, um, and hope your, the rest of your conference is excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A new generation to challenge, uh, to help solve the problems of a, of a future that 